Hi YouTube, it's Kathy and this is my weekly entertainment wrap up for March 12th to 18th. This week I read three books, I watched one movie, and I listened to one book. Throughout this video I'm probably going to look and sound like crap and that's because for the first time in three years I have a cold. <laughs> if you had made me guess how I was going to spend my only weekend in Edinburgh in 10 years, it probably wouldn't have been with a cold, but here we are. I've got my Lemsip, I've got my Strepsils, I've got my Boots brand tissues, and uh, here we go. The one good thing I guess about being sick is I actually finished reading some books yesterday. First book I finished this week is a graphic novel called Girl Haven. The cover of this one was sent to me by a friend who found it in a thrift store and said this looks really cute, and I checked to see if my library had it, downloaded a digital copy, read it, and then reported back that yes, in fact, it was pretty cute. At the beginning of this book, as far as our protagonist knows, he is a boy. He lives with his father because his mother disappeared about three years ago, and there's a shed in their backyard that has all of this stuff that she left behind, including all these sketches and manuscripts about this fantastical world. When he has a few friends over, they decide that they're going to do this spell they found so they can go into the magical world just thinking it's make-believe they put on costumes that type of thing but then it actually takes them to that world the one catch however is that that world is only for girls so he's a little bit confused how he ended up there like I said, this one was cute. It had a couple of twists and turns vis-a-vis -vis both the plot of how they got there and how they're going to get home, as well as his feelings as to who he is or who she is, depending on how it ends up. And this one was definitely worth a read. The next book I finished is All the Dangerous Things. This is a book about a woman who, about a year previous to the start of this novel, had her son stolen from her, and she's just trying to find out what happened. He was an infant. He was taken directly from his crib, and nobody has figured out where he is or if he's even still alive. In order to keep people talking about the case, she's been going to different things like True Crime Con and speaking at different events, and some people in the town think she's doing this just for publicity and that type of thing, where she honestly just wants to get her son back. She wants to know what happened. She also hasn't really been able to sleep since he's been taken, which plays into a trope that I'm sure that you've heard of before, the unreliable narrator trope. You don't know if you can trust your own mind, but I find that was played so well in this book because this character just truly wants to know what happened to her son, even if she ended up having something to do with it, and even if she ended up having something to do with something that happened in her past that is still unresolved. This one had a bunch of twists and turns. I didn't see who it was until the very end, which is, I think, exactly what makes me happy about this, and this had excellent discussions about true crime and the consumption thereof. Yesterday I was informed of a trans mask retelling of Cinderella called Green Things Grow From Cinders, and I went, yes, please, I will buy that. It's only 32 pages long, so it is a very short novelette, if you will. And it's about this trans guy named Ash who hasn't come out yet. He owns a flower shop, and he's meant to go to this wedding, but he doesn't really want to put on the dress he bought for the wedding because that's just not going to work for him. He does not want to be wearing a dress. So he tells his roommates he's not going to go. However, at this wedding is actually somebody he's had a crush on for eight Ages, and he recently just found out that there's a potential that that person also likes dudes. So after a really weird nap where he has this dream about actually meeting up with the guy and them maybe making out, he actually gets a little bit of unexpected help to make him go to this wedding in his own personal style. Like I said, this was really short, but I really enjoyed the writing. I really enjoyed that this wasn't trying to be fleshed out more than it had to be. I think it was about the perfect length, and I really ended up enjoying it. I didn't actually look up to see if the authors or illustrators of Girlhaven are trans, but I know that the author of this last book is trans. So that's another option if you're participating in the Trans Rights Readathon, which is starting on Tuesday. On the movie I watched this week, last night Chad and I watched Looper, which is something he has seen before and I don't think I've seen before. Essentially, we are set in 2044, I believe, and time travel hasn't been invented yet, but it will be invented in about 30 years. And it's immediately outlawed, however, there are people on the fringes of society that use it for nefarious means, so essentially they basically send people back in time to be killed and then the body destroyed. Because if you kill a body in the future, it actually leaves a trail because of time technology reasons. Our main character is Joe, who is played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, although it's really hard to tell that it's him because they do some weird things with his face in this movie. And he is one of these loopers, so basically he just stands where he's waiting for a body to show up. They're meant to show up on their knees with their hands bound behind their back and a thing over their face so you can't tell who they are. Once you've shot them, you're meant to just cut open the back of their jacket and it should have silver in there, but however, the one day when you cut open the back of their jacket and there's gold, that means you just killed your future self because that's how they close the loop. That means you have the 
next 30 years or so to enjoy all of that money that you've been gaining from having this job. However, the Mafia is not very happy when you don't close your loop, which is why the face is covered, you're not supposed to know who you're killing, but eventually we see that Joseph Gordon-Levitt turns into Bruce Willis. As far as the time travel aspect of this goes, there are a couple of loopholes that I don't completely understand. However, it's a good action flick. It's interesting if you don't sit there too long thinking about the little holes in this loop situation. It's kind of fun. This world also has the added bonus of telekinesis, so that's an interesting thing to also add to this world. Why not? The audiobook I listened to this week is The Mimicking of Known Successes. This is a Sherlock Holmes retelling, but the two characters are both women. They used to have a thing going back in college, they haven't seen each other for about five years, but now the Sherlock character needs help from the Watson character to solve the disappearance and potential murder of one of her colleagues. Oh, and this is also set on Jupiter. All of that aspect of it was kind of cool actually, but it also a little bit detracted from my ability to understand who all of the background characters were and try to figure out the mystery. I was however very interested in the dynamics between the Sherlock and the Watson characters. I can't remember the names, I am so sorry. If I wasn't all looped up on Lemsip, I might remember their names but now is not the time for that. This was short, sweet, and interesting. It only recently came out, and it does appear to be the first in a series, so we could see more mysteries solved by this dynamic duo, which would be kind of cool. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment, but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a coffee account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that, as always, is down below. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!